Look, we're back in my apartment in LA, yeah! Hi, I'm John and this is my vlog, and today we're going to talk about one of my favorite nerdy interests, comic books. I've been reading comic books for probably like 10, 12 years now, and I like them a lot, and a lot of people like them a lot, but it's a particularly imposing looking medium to get into, especially if you're interested in superhero comics. Basically, the market is just ginormous, and there's so much you can choose from. And then on top of that, some of these characters have been around for 50, 60 years, and it can get intimidating to know what to read when. But I have got some tips and tricks for you for getting into the comic book world. If you think that I don't really like superheroes, so comics aren't for me, you should know that there are comics in every genre. Romance, science fiction, just regular fiction. There are westerns, there are mysteries, there are fairy tales. Pretty much whatever you like to read, there's probably a comic that reflects that genre of your choice. But how do you know where to go from there? Well, always tip number one, do you have any friends that do it? Your friends personally know you, and if they read comics, they can probably suggest to you some of their favorite titles that you think they'd like. In lieu of that, I will be your friend and tell you some of the titles I like. Three of my favorite non-superhero titles are Fables, Why the Last Man, and Saga. You can probably check those out at your local bookstore. But let's talk about superheroes, because I think those are the things that seems the most intimidating to everyone. The first thing you have to realize about reading superhero comics is that, yes, these heroes have been around for a long time, but writers are aware of the fact that they want new readers to come in, so they create points that are good jumping on points for new readers, just in case. Both DC and Marvel, within the last four years, did a big, massive renumbering. So not only would it be a good point to get onto a specific book, but a good point to jump into the universe. Both companies released tons of new number one issues. DC revamped some of their characters' histories to be a little more understandable and concrete. And Marvel designed each book to be a specific jumping on point for the universe as a whole. Part of the fun of reading about superheroes in the Marvel and DC universe is the way they interact with each other. And so it's definitely nice at those points to be able to not just say, this is a good point for you to start reading the X-Men, but this is a good point you can read the X-Men and the Avengers so that next time they talk to each other, you're like, hey, this is cool. Anytime you see a number one issue or a trade paperback marked number one, you can pretty much assume that's going to be a good jumping on point. They normally don't market them that way if they don't think a new reader will be able to understand what's happening. Also, we're lucky enough to live in the internet age. There's several really dedicated good wiki sites full of information about all the characters where if you don't know exactly what's going on, you can go have it clarified. The biggest thing, don't be afraid of the history of the universe. Yes, it's there, and yes, in good comics it will matter, but normally they will tell you what you need to know if you weren't there for when that happened in the books. And soon, when you've been reading the books for five or ten years, you're like, hey, I remember when that happened five or ten years ago. Want to know some good places you can read heroes from your favorite summer blockbusters? Superman, you should check out All-Star Superman by Grant Morrison. Batman's New 52 jumping on point a few years ago was great because it didn't completely revamp the history, but it gave you enough knowledge within those first few books that you could follow everything that's happening while setting him on a new path. The current new run of the Avengers is pretty great for jumping on purposes, but if you want to go back in time a little bit, find the early volumes of Brian Michael Bendis' New Avengers. Pretty good stuff. Astonishing X-Men by Joss Whedon is a great place to start reading some X-Men books. It's fairly far removed from the current status quo of the X-Men, but still will give you a good sense of what X-Men comics are all about. And the Marvel Now X-Men series are really, really good. If you'd like a recommendation for any other characters good jumping on points, ask me in the comments. I'll be happy to recommend a few things, and feel free to answer each other's questions. The last thing I want to discuss is how you get your comics. Sometimes going into a comic store can be intimidating or difficult depending on where you are, but we live in the era of digital comic books. I use a site called Comixology.com, which in addition to giving you good digital books some same day as release, they often have sales where you can try new books for 99 cents as opposed to for the full cover price. Also, Barnes & Noble and other bookstores tend to carry collections of the major series from different publishers. Any book number number one will probably be a good jumping on point, and that'll include several comics. They're not hard to access, and they're really not as scary to get into as you think. Just go out there, find a number one issue, and jump in. I promise you won't be sorry. I'm gonna enjoy my last few days before work starts kicking me in the butt. You have a good day, okay? Bye.